Hello, everybody. Welcome to an impromptu live stream broadcast here in the uh, Thai Wondering page here. And thank you very much if you're just jumping in. Now, this is not has not been promoted or nothing in the in the public fear. But uh, if you happen to be in the neighborhood, take a look because we have something interesting to tell you about. Now, we all know that our dear Brooke is out of the country at the moment, and we'll talk about him later, in a f just in a few minutes. But in the studio right now, with me here in Taipei, is uh, Stuart Glenn, and he's going to tell you what he's been up to, and there's something secret that he's doing. How are you doing, Glenn? How are you doing? Ah, uh, good, James. I should say, Stuart, what are we calling you Gl uh, Glenn for, man? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Everybody does it, everybody does it Thomas. <laughs> Okay, okay. You see, I, I got I got one of these weird names because my first name can be a last name. You know, it's like really weird. You oh, know? Yeah, yeah. Are you sitting down? My full name is Stuart James Thomas Glenn. You, as they say in yeah, Chinese, yeah, you know, yeah. this is Yuan Fen. So yeah, somehow yeah. we were meant to be with yeah. each other. You know, Absolutely. that stuff. It's kismet man. symmetry. Yeah. <laughs> so tell, just just talk about why I uh, dragged you into the office here yeah, because well, you you you're doing something really special, man. Well, yeah. thanks, man. Talk first, talk a little bit about that. Yeah, first, thanks a lot for having me. This is an anytime am amazing setup you got here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if you guys ever get invited by James to come down and uh, and speak with him, do it. Yeah, <laughs> thanks yeah, thanks for it. the this promo. Is, oh no, I, I'm I, I'm dreaming. This is what I want my office to Oops. look like. Yeah. <laughs> no, you don't. No, you don't. No, no, you don't have to clean it. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, thanks for having us. Uh, as your partner uh, Brooke Hall has mentioned to his students in his acting lab classes, and uh, he mentioned it on on Facebook a couple of months back. He was talking about a play called White Rabbit, Red Rabbit by N Nassim Solomanpour, an Iranian dissident playwright. And it has a really unique format, uh, unlike anything really that's ever been done in the theater before. And Brooke had said that this was something he wanted to do for his uh, his swan song. As <laughs> as followers of Thai Wanderer will know, Brooke was the godfather yep. of theater in, yeah. in, in Taipei. At his peak, he was running five full-length plays a year, mm. working his butt off. And I was fortunate enough yeah. to be cast in one of his plays called Wait Until Dark. Yeah. And had the time of my life doing it. And all the different odd jobs I've done in the last 20-odd years of being in Taiwan. Yeah, but hold on, hold on. Let's talk about I mean, you've been doing all kinds of things out here, man. I mean, Sure, sure, yeah. yeah what yeah. brought you out here, dude? <laughs> Oddly enough, yeah. I was tired of being a starving actor. Oh, <laughs> yeah. moving right along. Yeah, yeah. I was, I, I was in Vancouver. I was getting auditions for X Files, and I was doing a lot of theater in Vancouver. But I was living in my van down by I the river, it. pretty much, you know. And uh, I just decided that's that's enough of that. I retired from acting, retired from the theater, and came to find my fortune in Taiwan. And and you know I really had retired. I started doing the odd commercials mm. for you know slinging beer or ice cream, whatever yeah, you know. Yeah, a hobby. Was, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, it didn't pay the rent, but it was you know it was and it, you know you brought your acting skills to bear even minimally when you're mm -hmm. doing these these uh, these hawking of goods for Taiwan advertising. But then Brooke brought me back from retirement, dragged me mm -hmm. into, uh, I think it started with directing the 24-hour play festival, one mm. of the plays in that. And uh, and then from, uh, yes, as I recall, it was the morning of the 24-hour, first 24-hour play festival. Mm. I showed up to pick up my script, and he offered me the role of Mr. Rote, the uh -huh. Mr. Rote and Wait Until Dark. And it was hard to say no, right? Okay, no, yeah, never yeah. book. <laughs> no, no, you don't <laughs> Well, I, I've unfortunately had to say no a few times to Oops, him since. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. And that was hard to do. But, uh, but yeah, the best job I ever had in, in Taiwan was working for uh, with Brooke and, yeah. and the rest of that great cast on Wait Until Dark. So just, just get back on this project thing, man, because, you right. know, you got something really, really cool, unique oh, going yeah. on about this. And, you yeah. know, there's a lot of things I, I want to pull out of, you know, why you cho chose to do this. But talk a little bit about the background of this particular project. Okay, the uh, playwright Nassim Solomanpour is an Iranian playwright who was held uh, with his passport was revoked by his government and he was unable to travel. And so he's written this play so he could vicariously travel the world through his play. Mm -hmm. So in fact, he requests it's not necessary, but he requests that a seat be left for him at every production of his play. Now, but what makes this unique? It's not overtly political. It's it's written metaphorically, and and you can draw your own conclusions from his words. But here's the kicker about this, and what makes it so different, so 
utterly unique in the world of theater is that it's a one-person show, but if the actor has seen the play or even read the play before, he is forbidden from performing it. Oh, that's yeah, that's isn't that unique? That's it, right? Yeah. So you're called to the stage by the uh, the MC, the, who, who uh, for in our production, it's Jerome. Dr. Jerome Keating, who mm. would be the keeper of the words. Keeper of the words. I, I, I kind of like words. that. Sounds yeah, very, yeah. It sounds very very holy, you yeah, know? Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. Uh, or maybe top secret military mm -hmm. type deal. Well, who knows, right? We really can't know. Is, is it one of those situations like he, he gets there and he just like tears it open and like this is your script and That's be happy exactly with it? exactly what it is. He's going to give the actors the script in a sealed envelope at, once they're called onto the stage. They tear it open, he sits down, and the performance begins. That's it. You're on. Yeah, you're on. No you're turning on. back. And mm -hmm. and the way we're staging it, there's no escape either. <laughs> there's no escape. There's no running away from this. There is absolutely no running away. We, uh, we want to create a set with the audience. Okay, and, and how do you go about doing that? What, 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 is it a proximity type of thing? Well, it's first of all, we stage it in, in what is called in the round. Mm -hmm. So there is audience right. seated uh, on the, the, the 45, 90, you know, in, in right angles around him. Uh -huh. But we also want to pack people around the, the chairs. There's a limited uh -huh. number of seats. There's only 60 seats. Are the doors locked? <laughs> uh, well, they might they might have to be. Okay. But once, so if you want to reserve a seat, you want to make sure you have a seat for any of these eight performances. You have to buy a Golden Rabbit All Festival Pass. Okay. Uh, after that, we're just opening the doors for anybody that wants to come in and see this. We want the the actor once he's on stage to be surrounded by people, so there is literally no escape. Mm -hmm. The only way out is through page 44 of the script, which is the last page. Yeah, but, yeah. but did the writer particularly have this in mind? No. So I don't know what he has in mind. I, I haven't read the script. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. okay. This is my feeling. As the producer, really, it's... I mean, you're you're familiar with the Taoist concept of Wu Wei or Zi, oh, yeah. right? Okay. As an actor, you're always striving to find that perfect balance. You work hard. You rehearse hard. So come performance time, you just be. You become mm -hmm. one with the script, mm -hmm. and it's, it's that freedom of doing nothing, right? Right. Well, this time, the tables are turned, and the producer gets to do nothing. Oh, really? <laughs> Very little to do. Well, you know, you, you buy the rights, you cast the uh, the people to play it, mm -hmm. uh, and then, you know, then you just let it run. There's nothing else to do. No, well, well that, yeah, that's just yeah, 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 yeah. being Rel a little bit. Yeah, 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 there's a lot, yeah, yeah. still a lot to Rel do. Rel there's no set to build. There's no right. light lighting plot to, to design. Mm -hmm. There's there's no soundscape to to oversee and and, and develop. You know, mm -hmm. it's it's one actor, one script, one audience, mm -hmm. and we're gonna do that eight times mm -hmm. in two days. That sounds tiring, man. Well, it's one actor per. So the, on day one. We at two o'clock in the afternoon at the red room, the, uh, we the will, infamous red room, the, yeah. oh, the wonderful red room. Wonderful. They've moved locations since you last may have been there. They're mm -hmm. no longer in that third or fourth building in on the left. Mm -hmm. They're in the very first building as you enter the the old Air Force grounds. There, first building on your left. It's a much more intimate space, mm -hmm. much more. I, I, it's I, a third of the size of the old space. Okay. Right, and and there's. Perfect staging. There's a carpet in the middle of the room, and that's going to be the stage. It's a postage stamp of a stage, mm -hmm. like a jail cell. Uh -huh. You see, I don't know what the play's about, but given the Iranian dissident angle of it, as a producer, I'm trying to create an ambiance where the actor feels trapped. I'm really raising the stakes here. Performing something sight unseen mm -hmm. is a leap of faith. For, for real. For Working real. in the round is the most difficult uh, facet of... Proscenium acting or uh, thrust acting, working in the round is really difficult. One of the best plays Brooke had produced up at uh, the lab was The Gods of Carnage, and mm -hmm. they did that in the round. And it was this really heavy play, but you're also looking across the audience and, and seeing their reaction. And it, it it's a whole different dynamic well, when you work in the round. I, I'm going to cut you off a little bit sure. because, you know, I, I've done some things, you know, in, in Taiwan, uh, Chinese production and stuff like that, but not not nowhere near your level of stuff. Why do you want to torture yourself, man? I mean, I mean, there's got to be a reason why you want this kind of beautiful pain, man. And I, I'm using the word in a nice way, beautiful. Why? An gotcha. Act, an actor's got to act. 
That's it, man. And and you can't shy away from a challenge. And there's and there's nothing more challenging that I've ever encountered than stepping on stage with with the relying on your craft, on your training, uh, being open to wherever it goes. It's it's pure. It's the purest form of acting I can think of. And it sure beats the hell out of, you know, and your winner is Taiwan Omar. <laughs> yeah, that's me, guys. I'm sorry you've been hearing that commercial for so long. <laughs> well, just, just back up then. Let's talk about the makeup of the cast then. Let's yeah, talk a little bit yeah, about yeah, these yeah, guys. Yeah, yeah. Let's talk about that. Well, this is the thing. Okay, I, first I have to talk about how Brooke was the one to bring this to our attention. And Brooke wanted to do it as his swan song performance. Mm -hmm. as, as your listeners will know, Brooke has left Taipei. He's now living in Vienna. Producing, directing, and teaching theater. He's living the dream, and we're so happy, and I'm personally so proud of him. Uh, and he wanted to do this for a swan song, but he's not going to have the time. He's only going to be in Taipei for a window of something like 10 days. And he was not having much success negotiating mm. a decent price for the rights from Aurora Nova, mm. Berlin, the, uh, the people that hold the rights. So... I kind of just, you know, made an inquiry. I found out who held the rights. I, sp I wrote an email to Aurora Nova, and uh, they came back with a price that I was like, <laughs> okay, <laughs> <laughs> I, I see what Brooke's saying now. This is there's no way they can do this in Taipei and make it yeah. financially feasible. But seeing as the answer was no, I had nothing to lose, and I wrote them back and explained the story of Brooke to them, how he is the godfather of theater, the backbone of of anything live English entertainment in Taiwan, mm -hmm. uh, how so many of us have gotten a, you know, how we gotten a chance to trod the boards one more time. Yeah. And uh, I threw myself at their mercy. Oh, really? That sounds painful. <laughs> and, and offered them X number of dollars. And, and then they came back right away and halved the initial ask and removed that they wanted also 10% of the door and they removed that. Mm -hmm. So it was now actually something we could consider uh, for my, my company, uh, Infinity Key, to produce. Mm -hmm. It was within our, our budget. And so then I started to cast it. And as you scroll down through uh, our live interactive e program, you can see here this is Empress. Whoops. Whoops, we get there. Yeah. Hold uh, on. Okay. So Empress or Michi Fu is a she has her doctorate in psychology and she's uh, she's new to the scene in Taiwan but she's making a big big bang. She started the Formosa Im sorry Formosa Improv Group or Fig mm -hmm. and they uh, seem to be working out of the red room. So she's you know there's a little symbiosis there. Uh, she's a performance artist and uh, she's going to be leading off. She's the first one to take the plunge into the unknown with uh with white rabbit and she'll be going off on saturday the 29th at 2 p.m mm -hmm. and then if you are in that audience you will be the first ones to hear this play but here's what's so unique about this play and the way w that we're staging it in this this white rabbit red rabbit festival as soon as Mitchie finishes the stage, the next actor, John Brownlee, will be given the stage. The audience will be cleared out, and he will have some a few moments to warm up and everything. And then another audience will be let in. If you go and see the play the second time, you are now rehearsed in this play. Mm -hmm. You've seen it. Mm -hmm. You know what's going to happen. You know the dangers for the actor that lay ahead, whereas the actor doesn't. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> so seeing this play more than one time gives you it, it really flips theater on its ear. It, it changes the dynamic. The actor audience relationship is completely changed. And I've never heard of anything like this. I mean, you we have that convention of breaking the fourth wall mm. where you talk in direct address to the audience, which can be unnerving and have great theatrical effect. Mm. This is what is this? This is imploding the fourth wall around the actor and it's and fourth walls all around it mm. it's just a crazy new dynamic that is unheard of wow by staging it in these back to back to back uh performances so there'll be four on saturday and then another four on sunday mm -hmm. all top cast there we have john brownlee who's done some amazing work at the lab most recently he starred in tape 
and uh, that uh, really stellar show. He was he also worked with me closely in uh, Wait Until Dark, mm -hmm. and just one of the most professional actors I've ever worked with. Really dedicated to the craft. There's so many. There's so many. We got that talent here, but so you know we got to yeah. we got to find the opportunity to have them show themselves and. and uh, Get more involved, help the, the Taiwan community become more aware that such things do exist. Exactly. And this is why we're, we're opening up this show for free. Mm. Anybody can come and watch as many shows as they want. At the end of the show, we'll have a, a little magician's hat, and you can feed the rabbit. Okay. Drop a little donation <laughs> please in there. Feed. Yeah, please feed the rabbit. But, uh, you know, if you, if you want us to continue putting on live events that are really interesting and outside the box like this, you know, Help help share the love. <laughs> yeah. So then after John Brownlee is, oh, that, oh. that old guy. Yeah. That's, that's, yeah, that's a familiar face. Yeah, that yeah. Old, <laughs> I'll be stepping on the stage. So I, too, am being held in the uh, hermetically sealed kimchi jar on the mm -hmm. roof of on the roof of uh, Red Room until it's my turn to play. Oh. So I'll be the third one going off. Uh, uh, you, you, uh, is it possible for you to get, for this particular project, any type of butterflies in your tummy? Oh, sure. Uh, any any project. If you're not having butterflies, you're, you, you're not doing you're it not, right. You're not. Mm -hmm. But, you know, uh, you, everybody, as they're standing in the wings waiting for their first entrance, is nervous. But... I've always I learned early on because I used to do monologues back in my young days. I've done this is not my first one person mm -hmm. show, and you know you have fifty five pages of monologue that you've memorized and you have to pick up your cues and everything. And at one point, you just have to take that first step. Right. Just put that one foot in front of the other and step into the light and trust that you've done the work. And if you've done the work, then it becomes Uwe or Zu. One line leads to the next yeah. line. Then we've got Brooke, the headliner of our show. Yeah. You know? So we put this together. We cast most of it. It's like 75% of it. And then we brought it to Brooke and said, if you don't want to do it this way, we're out. We haven't paid for the rights <laughs> yet. You know, it's up to you, man. This was your idea. Uh -huh. uh, I did go behind your back and I've created all this, but we all accept that if you don't want to do it, do it this way, we drop it right now. And we let him have time to think about it. And he eventually came back and said, yes, I'm in. Yeah. And so that's that's, I, then I, I went and dropped the money out on the rights. And uh, wow. we're, we're, we're going full steam. You're, you're better than I am. I mean, this, 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 <laughs> this is a short window that you have, too. I mean, mm. uh, uh, you know, dear Brooke will be here just for a short time. Oh, you yeah. Know? yeah. And, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. You know, he's we will be blessed with his presence, and but that took some timing, man. I mean, yeah, well, I mean, it was all based on Brooke. This is, this is an homage to Brooke. Uh, there's a very few people that have not that are involved in this that have not been touched by Brooke's artistry, mm -hmm. and uh, I'm sure there's a lot of audience out there listening to this uh, this stream that want to say goodbye to Brooke. So we're just making it super easy. Around 6.30 p.m. on Saturday, December 29th, Brooke will be invited to the stage and given a script of White Rabbit, Red Rabbit and allowed to, uh, to share his, his beautiful movement and voice. And it's going to be something. I, I'm so glad I'm going before him so I get to watch <laughs> it. Right? Because, uh, yeah, if I, none of the Saturday or Sunday guys, none of the Sunday, Sunday cast can watch anything on Saturday. They have right. to stay in the kimchi jar. Wow. Yeah. Well, you know, I really appreciate, you know, you taking the time out of your day to join us here. To, oh, and, it's, um, it's and, you know, we pay homage to our friend Brooke here because mm -hmm. he really done so much. And, uh, you know, we all wish that Taiwan actually put more, Taiwan to, uh, invest more in him. But, He'll be back. You know, he's a, he's not the easy uh, the type of guy you can keep down. Well, Taiwan is like that, right? It gets in your blood. Yeah. Right? Even though real. he's got the dream job. And, and I would kill for that opportunity. <laughs> and I would never, I would say, goodbye, Taiwan. I'm never coming back. But you know, and I yep. know, and Brooke knows, Taiwan's it's in your blood. Of, yeah. It's part of you. <laughs> it's, it's, it's such a great place to live. And, and the good people, man. Great people. I mean, it's not a perfect place, but yeah. But what place is? Yeah, you know, goodness, we yeah, know yeah, that for a yeah. fact. It's perfect for me. Well, look, you know, thank you very much for coming down here, James. Thank and, you for uh, having me, man. It's and then we'll get honor. you back in here again. And uh, Brooke, we'll be waiting for you. So, well, for Taiwan wondering, I'm James Thomas. I'm and here with for uh, Brooke. I'm Stu Glenn. All right, ciao, ciao. Bye bye. Bye Thanks. bye.